Good evening and a very warm welcome to NTV My Teacher. As always, it's a pleasure to be with all of you uh, this awesome evening. And uh, today we'll be discussing a very, very important topic and we'll have some very special guests in the studio along with us. Uh, by the way, thank you uh, for all those positive and encouraging feedback that you gave us regarding the last episode. I ran into a lady uh, at a mall and she came up to me and said, well, the show was quite useful. And uh, she advised us to make sure that all the teachers and all the schools watch the show. So I told her, hold on, hold on. It's not just about teachers and, and schools. Uh, it's also about we parents and students as well. Uh, but then she went on to say, but yes, yes, I agree. But the first, the prime responsibility rests with the teachers. I had to disagree because frankly speaking, the mantle falls on all of us. And today we're going to discuss another very important topic. And that's about interpersonal skills in students. How can we develop interpersonal skills or social skills in our children? Uh, frankly speaking, uh, most of us parents, we spend a whole lot of time and energy and all our financial resources to make sure that our children are equipped with technical skills. By technical skills, I mean math, I mean uh, physics and chemistry and English. We support them, we make sure that teachers teach well in class, we send them for extra tuition classes because we want them to score A plus grades across all these subjects in the examinations. Now these are technical skills. So if you compare your child or the student to a car, to a nice fancy car, we are basically talking about the nice wheels, the, the sleek body and uh, the engine of the car. These are technical skills. But if this car doesn't have gas inside it, doesn't have fuel inside it, unfortunately, uh, the car wouldn't move forward. It will have to sit quietly in the garage. And this soft skill that we are talking about is interpersonal skills. The ability of the student to relate with the outer world. The ability of the student to build meaningful relationships. The ability of the student to get others to support him. The ability of the student uh, to resolve conflicts amicably. And his ability to work well with others towards a purposeful goal. Now, if this skill is not developed, then unfortunately the car is not able to move. And then you'll find lesser cars, smaller cars, inferior models, which doesn't have so many technical skills, cruising and winning uh, the races of life. Now, as I was doing research for this program, I asked parents, uh, and, and let me ask you too, frankly speaking, how much time or what percentage of your time do you spend on developing interpersonal skills in your children? And most of them, uh, you know, uh, they were uncomfortable and they said maybe 5%, maybe 10%. And, and that's sad because if we do that, then we are preparing our children to do well in these small tests and examinations that schools and colleges can give them. But we are also preparing them to fail uh, in the tests provided by life. So today, uh, we'll have uh, a very interesting discussion on this particular topic. Uh, I'll have a, I have a friend in the studio, uh, uh, Mr. Balram. Uh, now, Balram is uh, a, a recruitment manager in the construction industry. So he exactly knows what kind of people uh, the corporate segment, the big bad world out there is looking to enlist uh, to add value to organizations. Now, that's before our first break. And after our first break, we'll also have two young, smart uh, people in the studio, a teenage boy and a teenage girl. And, and that's going to be another interesting segment. We're going to ask them their perspectives about students who are popular and students who are not that popular. So all our young friends are requested to watch that segment keenly. And after that, across a couple of episodes, we'll continue our discussion on the topic, how can we develop interpersonal skills in our children? So first and foremost, we let's ask uh, Mr. Balram, uh, uh, our good friend in the studio, about uh, uh, the key skills that people need to be successful in the corporate world. Uh, Balram, uh, it's a pleasure to have you in the studio. It's a pleasure being here. Okay, Thank it's you very been much. 20, 22 years. We did our college studies together. Uh, I, yeah, close to 20 years since we met, I think. I know, and, so and it's a pleasure to sit uh, beside you to take yes. this meaningful discussion forward. Yes. Uh, 
uh, let me ask for the benefit of the uh, our viewers. Balram, could you kindly introduce yourself? <coughs> I uh, basically, till recently, I've been heading uh, recruitment for one of the larger contracting companies in Abu Dhabi called Safe Bin Darwish. In fact, incidentally, I just uh, resigned last week. I'm setting up my own uh, recruitment firm uh, called Prolific Consultants recently. So I'm in, the, I'm in between, you could say. But uh, as a part of my recruitment duties, I think I've recruited close to 3,000 people over the last six years. So uh, you could say that you know, I've, been, I've been quite involved in sieving out the sort of people we need and the sort of people we don't need within the company. Exactly. I, I think the value that Balram is going to add is most parents, when we talk about life skills, they wonder, uh, is this just hype? You know, because we have to spend time uh, uh, developing our kids in their subjects, helping them with their projects, sending them for karate classes, uh, giving them extracurricular coaching. So, where do we get time to develop uh, interpersonal skills? So, let's make it very clear to all the parents watching the show. Let's ask the question. Balram, uh, what do you think? Do you think life skills or social skills are important for our young friends to succeed in life? Uh, for me, uh, life skills and interpersonal skills is probably the most important factor that, that, that uh, ensures that a person succeeds or fails within, uh, within his work environment, or also in personal life. But since we are dealing about work, I'll talk about work environment. Uh, you, uh, you can talk about people at two stages of their career. One is uh, when they're entering an organization. Two is when they are at the mid, in mid-career and again entering an organization at a middle level. Now I have recruited from campus and I have recruited mid-level people as well. And uh, one of the fir first things we look for is someone who would fit into the company. That is someone who would work with the company culture, the company values as a team. And if I got a supremely qualified person who would not uh, fit into the company culture and would create problems as uh, opposed to an average person who could be trained but has got uh, good interpersonal skills and would add value to the company uh, in terms of the teamwork, in terms of the uh, culture, I would choose a second person. So uh, that is one, that is entering a company. And number two, uh, once you're into a company, you would be looking at, uh, you'd be looking at growth within the company, you'd be looking at uh, promotion, you'd be looking at having an impact in your work environment. Now that as well would depend solely on interpersonal skills because you, it is very rare that you have a job where you can deliver on your own. It's always uh, you have to work in tandem with someone else. You need to influence other people, whether they be your peers, your subordinates or your superiors. So interpersonal skills there as well is of paramount, uh, you know, paramount importance. And the sad thing is that what I'm finding is more and more people are being churned out to our well, uh, I wouldn't say educated, they're well uh, learned in terms of book learning, but they're, they're totally uh, incapable of dealing with life situations, as in dealing with people from a different culture, people dealing with people from a different age group, and even or from a different country. So I think this is something that has to be corrected. Now, parents, I think this is something that uh, uh, we need to be extremely uh, conscious about, because uh, we need to make sure that our children are trained on interpersonal skills. We just heard from somebody who has recruited thousands of people. When it comes to uh, uh, getting people into the organization, they said yes, they look at technical skills, they look at the kind of colleges you have, you have attended, the kind of courses that you have taken, but they also look at how well these people can get along with others, how well they can, they can work with others. And, and, and Balram very explicitly said that that's given more importance than the technical qualifications that uh, students have. Now, isn't that unfortunate? If we want our child to swim, we would send him to a proper swimming school, swimming classes. If we, if we want him to take a driving license, you wouldn't ask him to go drive. But when it comes to something as important as interpersonal skills, we don't really spend time. Schools don't teach interpersonal skills. And you, when I spoke to you, you said that you spend maybe 5% of your time developing interpersonal skills. So are we preparing our children to fail? This is a million dollar question. Uh, so please, parents, take note. We don't want, uh, you know, well-built cars to sit in, in garages and to rust. We want them to zip through the highways of life, for which we have to make sure that uh, they're given inter interpersonal skills coaching. Let, let me ask uh, uh, Balram again. Balram, uh, what do you think? How can parents 
uh, if you could give us a few tips on what parents can do to develop yeah. interpersonal skills among students. Now, I'm a parent myself and I have school going kids and okay. uh, so I can talk from both perspectives. Uh, as a parent, what I feel now is what's happening is unfortunately that there's so much emphasis on again learning and so much of uh, uh, curricular activities that uh, children have very little time to socialize okay. and what little time they have uh, free time they have is spent on computers okay. on tabs and on uh, on more on the virtual yes, world yes that's sad I, I would i would personally think that there are probably three clear cut ways in which uh, parents can encourage kids to be more socially interactive and pick okay. up skills one is ensure that they have a scheduled playtime and they, the playtime is as important as the time they spend on studies. Okay. So that they, they mingle with others exactly. And, and, exactly. And, and they get to learn the tricks of the trade. Exactly. Okay. Let them go out, let them meet different ch children, let them make friends, let them make enemies. Both okay. will teach them. True, true. Very right. True. That's, yeah. that's one. Number two, I feel that you know there should be there should be interaction with uh, the ex extended family because now, if you see, I don't know. I'm sure you would agree with me. When we grew up, we had a whole gamut of cousins, all okay. with their own personalities. We grew mm -hmm. up with, mm -hmm. so there was a lot of social straining within the extended family themselves. But now with a nuclear family setup, there's hardly any interaction with your cousins or your second mm -hmm. cousins, mm -hmm. and that is one area which should be encouraged. That there, one is uh, you know the feeling that there's something more than the immediate family. Mm -hmm. Number two that that you know there are other people also related because the related part would help because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know there's a more uh, automatically there's a link true, and true. they would build further third is I feel there should be emphasis on extracurricular activities like okay. if there's an if, the, if your child sings if your child is a sports person mm -hmm. uh, encourage them not not to win medals or to become the best in it mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it develops their personality it develops their confidence true. it develops their interactions with people who they normally would not meet and I think this would be some basic ways in which you can build on their true, true. on their uh, you know on their social skills and one point I'd like to make is that any child under the age of two to three is mm -hmm. quite good at their interpersonal skills. Okay. You put them in contact with any other child of mm -hmm. two or three from anywhere in the world mm -hmm. and they would have no inhibitions in making friends. True, very true. So I think that what we are doing instead of training people to be more socially active and socially interactive is we are detraining them or taking away what they are born with mm -hmm. and I think that's something we should be thinking about as a society and as parents. True, and I think that's a very relevant point, Balram. Uh, what Balram was saying is we have it in us. It's 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 built into us by default. So I think we are doing uh, awful lot of things to actually uh, detrain students exactly. or detrain children from going out and mingling and making friends and and making enemies at times. It's it yeah, happens because you it you, happens, you yeah. get to learn from both these both kind of sides, uh, yeah. uh, relationships that you have, and you're building these skills so that when you go into the big bad world as an adult, you of course you know you can't work alone. You can't thrive alone. You definitely need. To, to work with other people to 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 convert all the technical knowledge that you have into reality and that's so important so uh, thank you for those tips but um, I think uh, we would love to have you uh, uh, and to continue this conversation but uh, probably I'll have to end with just this one uh, Dubai as we all know has got so many cultures so many yes. nationalities True. Uh, um, and our children when they start working they might uh, be asked to work with people from all different continents Very together much. Yeah, and we don't want them to go and just mingle with people of their own kind, uh, being very uncomfortable dealing with others mm. outside their close circle. So what do you think parents can do to make sure that uh, our children can get along with other cultures? Uh, see, uh, what you said is very true because in my uh, earlier company, we had 28 nationalities Okay. Uh, when we last checked. So uh, you have a host of cultures, a host of uh, types of people, um, you know, there's so many differences. I have been pondering on this question myself and the unfortunate thing is here there is very there's, there's a strong segregation of communities and nationalities because even if you go at the normal area where children would uh, interact with other people is schools True. but schools also have the you have the Indian schools you have the exactly. British schools exactly. so exactly. so the only answer I could say is probably if uh, you should get into get into to be part of a cultural activities mm -hmm. or that of a bigger club mm -hmm. and I think it's important even if you spend a little bit extra to get into a club where they meet with people from different nationalities True. because when they come into the work work life you cannot you cannot be only with your people exactly. and uh, and and I think the mo the best thing is to under is uh, the uh, the key is that they should understand is that everyone is the same under the True. skin True. True. So True. It's, True. it's just True. The differences are mainly superficial. Exactly. So once they understand that, I think they'll true, be fine. True. Uh, parents, uh, uh, th th this would be of interest uh, to you. Uh, 
um, I was basically looking at some of the most successful people that we know, especially using the Facebook accounts. And, and when, when you look at the friends that they have, you'll know uh, one secret for why they are so successful because you can find that they've got friends from different communities, different countries, different nationalities, different gender. So unless and until we prepare our children to actually shed their inhibitions about uh, uh, going out and saying hi and meeting and getting to know and working together with people who are different from them, I think they're going to find it really hard working in today's world. Working in the corporate segment, we understand when we have uh, all associate gatherings, you find that some people, you know, you have got an Indian group and an Arab group and a European group, uh, but then you've got some associates who very skillfully mingle through all these groups, who gets along with people, who've got friends in all these groups. And, and, and it's not a surprise that these are the people who are most successful. So uh, thank you, Balram. Thanks a lot thank for you being, uh, being with us in the studio. I think what we can uh, uh, take, the key message that we can take from this interaction is that parents, especially when your kids are teenagers and they're going to probably pass out from school in another couple of years, please spend more time please pay attention to their interpersonal skills are they able to make friends are they able to work together with their peers with their seniors uh, with their extended family members together are they able to create something of value if you don't focus on that and if you just focus on how much they score in their examinations then uh, uh, the analogy of the car uh, yeah, a very uh, technically brilliant car sitting in the garage not being able to move unfortunately will come true so please pay attention uh, to to their interpersonal skills and try your level best to develop that now um, after the break uh, we'll have an interesting segment we'll have two youngsters with us both are school students both are teenagers and both are immensely popular so we'll ask them about their perspectives their paradigms on who is popular who is not popular so our young friends are watching please take uh, note watch it keenly you might not listen to us you might not accept what we are saying but you can of course accept what your peers are saying so pay attention to the habits that they're mentioning because these habits can make you unpopular so don't go away as always please watch this segment uh, along with your whole family so we take a short break right now and when we come back we'll have uh, two of our young friends in the studio. Thank you, Balram. Thanks a lot for being Thank with you us. Very much. Yeah, uh, dear viewers, we take a short break now.